So this next one, guys, this girl, never met a girl like this in my life. So this is the Bumble girl. So I was on Bumble, because this is Tinder Stories, Bumble Stories, right? You got to send them on Snapchat. That's that's true. <laughs> so I was on Bumble, and there was this girl, right? And I matched with her, and she was easily like the best looking girl i ever seen on any app. And I was like, oh, dude, she's so cute, so attractive. And lo and behold, guess what she does? She messages me. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. So I respond, and I guess I did poor a poor job because she didn't really respond much after that. And I was like, oh, dude, I, I done muffed it up. I done muffed it up. And then, of course, I was unmatched with her after, like, a day or two. I was, I didn't, I just came. Oh, my God, see. So I was unmatched with her, and I was kind of bummed out. But whatever, dude, you know, it's life is life. So about a month later, I'm on Bumble again. And guess who pops up on Bumble? It's that same girl. So I swapped right as hell, and I, lo and behold, I matched with her. I matched with her again, and uh, she messages me again, and she's like, "Hey, uh, you know, didn't we match before?" And I'm like, "Girl, it's been not very long, but yeah, we did." And she talks a little bit more to me, and she agrees to hang out with me, and I'm blown away. And I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm so excited!" So this girl comes to my house, and. Uh, she has no quarrels with it, dude. She's like, now, I, I got to put this out there. She's one of the cooler chicks I've ever met in my life. She, like, just comes to my house. And I honestly don't understand, because this was almost, like, 95% of the interactions. I always told girls to just come over and drink with me, and they did. Girls are brave. Stop being so brave, girls. Like, don't go to a guy's houses, man. Like, your first time hanging, don't go to their house. I don't know why all these girls showed up. What if I killed her asses? Anyways... Anyways, she comes over. She's in like a giant hoodie, and she's like four foot eleven, man. She comes in and she has one of those THC vapes, and she is just killing that bitch. And this girl gets rolling and starts talking about space and existence and shit. And I don't smoke at the time. I didn't, and uh, cause I, you know, I had a job and stuff. So um, she starts talking about space and space and existence, and I'm like, dude, this cool. This girl's kill, kill, cool as hell. And she's smoking, and you know we, uh, she, you know, uh, sh she's like, "Hey, do you mind if I stay here?" And I actually have a picture. I would, I won't, I won't pull it up. It's a video, actually. Um, it's a video, and uh, I still have it on my phone. And it's the, it was like the first time we had ever hung out. And she's just sitting there laughing her ass off. And I still have that video. I saw it like a month ago, and I was like, "Oh my god!" So, um. You know, we're talking and whatnot. And she, of course, chooses to hang out. You know, she's like, I'm going to stay at your house. And I'm like, bro, let's do this. And, you know, I got a comment on this because it is an attraction-based thing. Girl was was rocking it. Rocking body, right? So she, she you know, she comes to my room. And, you know, that that was, I, if I, when I give people examples of, like, rant. Okay, so I saw this the other day. This is kind of, uh unrelated but kind of related sir pumpkin long shanks oh my god dude the eighth gold boys arrived two from pumpkin long shanks thank you baby pumpkin long shanks thank you dude i love you so we go to the room and a lot of people will tell you especially because i saw this last night on a stream actually i was watching i can't remember who it was they always say the first time with somebody's always bad that is not true they're a liar because I remember laughing audibly. Okay, so I know this is stupid, but this chick just climbed on me. This tiny little girl climbed on me and was just going ham. And I remember laughing audibly because of how, like, ridiculous it was and great it was. Like, because I couldn't believe it. Like, <laughs> I was just like, oh, my God, just laughing. And it, it was the funniest shit ever. It was just, she was just, it was great. It was the best shit ever. And, um... Thank you, Sir Pumpkin. Love you, Sky High. Appreciate you. Hey, Hell Snake. Cody, Count sorry Tequila. For missing the stream was fighting COVID. Cat fighting COVID, JR. Baby, I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry to hear that, but you back. You back, baby, JR. You got to use that Ultra Instincts, dude. So she she went ham on my ass. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to hang out with this girl more because she's fun to talk to. She's cute as hell. And you know what? I think uh, I think I like her. This is the first time ever. This was actually a few years, probably a year into my Tinder escapades. Love you, Nancy. But uh, I actually like kind of like this chick, and I have not liked a girl in a long time. So, you know, I like her. She's pretty cool. And um, she comes, we, you know, she'd come over every other night, and we'd hang out. Well, one night she comes over, okay, 
<clears throat> and she's, you know, hanging out. And she's, you know, been smoking and we've been drinking and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it comes to the time again for the cla- the great clapping. And uh, we're going ham. And, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm burying my fossil, you know, as hard as I can. So no one finds it in the next 200 years. And this girl, say in, this girl literally blacks out out of nowhere. Which is one of the scariest things I've ever experienced in my life. Out of nowhere. Gone. And I, like, jump up and, like, l- like lean her up and start fanning her off. And I'm like, you know, are you okay? Like, trying to figure out what the hell. What, what, are you okay? What, what, what? <laughs> oh, my word. And I get her water. And I'm, like, putting water on her face and shit, dude. And uh, that was the end of that. Um, look, did she die? No, dude. What the hell? That be now. That would be a story right there. No, she uh she passed out and she was really uh she was really embarrassed and she was uh apologetic and I'm like no, dude, it's no no big deal, no big deal. And um, I felt bad for her. She was apparently dehydrated or something. I don't know, but she uh we hung out a few more times and then she moved like across the country, so I never saw her again. And I was kind of sad, but dude, yeah, she she blacked the hell out and that was uh that was one of the scariest things I've ever dealt with. Ever. Ricky! Must have been that good. Shit. Dude, I'm rocking like a one incher. I don't think it was that good. Look, let's 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 go ahead and start where it always starts, okay? I'm on Tinder, right? And I'm feeling lonely. I got a, a Jack and Coke in my right hand, my phone in my left hand, and I'm slapping left and right. I see this girl. And I tell you what, man, she looking she looking slick as hell. Slick as hell. She looking good. See so boy slaps right on that ass. And she, and I, of course I message her because you know that's what we do, and I give her a I give her one of them 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 opening lines and we talk for about a day or two, and I do my thing. I'm like, hey baby, uh, head over to my house, and she's like, alright, cool. So she heads over to my house and she she looking thick in her pictures, and like the good kind of thick, like like Jerry cake, like my like my thumbnail tonight. She looking good. <laughs> Lo and behold. I got reverse catfished. Is that a thing? I don't think it. Well, you you know you'll know what I mean. She shows up to my house and I see her get out of her car. This girl is noticeably thinner than her pictures. Noticeably, so she walks in, and uh, <laughs> she walks in, and I'm like, "Oh, what's up?" And I give her a hug. This girl, I can feel her bones, man. I can feel the bones. And I knew that I had been swindled. And th- the bad thing about this swindling, guys, is it wasn't at a restaurant where I could escape. She was at my house. Now, granted, dude, there's nothing wrong with being thin. There's nothing wrong with that, dude. Don't get me wrong. But this girl smelled like she'd been smoking cigarettes since the day she came out of the womb. And hasn't bathed since. And she's a thin girl. And I could tell that she was literally spinning out of her mind. She just took a hit of something crazy and she was not right. Wow. There's nothing wrong with being bony, Michaela. I'm it, it's like it was it was more to it. So she was and she was she was cracked out of her mind or something. You know, we hang out for a minute, you know, we're drinking a little bit. And I do we're an hour into this and I'm like, all right, I gotta go to bed. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I have to go to bed. And uh, I got to work tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I got to go to bed, baby. I got I to gotta get out of here, you know. And she uh, didn't want to. She was like, oh, I could just stay here. And I'm like, ah! no, I don't think so. Um, but she insisted. She insisted. And she ended up staying at my house. And I was like, yeah, you can sleep on this couch right here. So I gave her a pillow and a big old comforter. And she's on the couch. And uh, I make the mistake of leaving my door unlocked, my bedroom door. That was Palm. And no, 30 minutes later, dude, this girl just walks into my room and climbs into my bed, dude. And I'm shaking. I'm uh, terrified. And she, like, uh, like, cuddles up to me. And I remember laying there and not sleeping for one minute. Not sleeping for one minute. I just lay there all night. 
like waiting, waiting for her to like for just making sure that she like. And luckily, luckily, thank God, she like wasn't one of those forward girls that will just touch her g- junk. She wasn't like that, so it worked out. She was waiting for me to make a move, and your boy wasn't. There was no moves to be made. And she texts me like the next day, and she was like, "Oh my God, you're so hot. Oh my God, you're you're so great." Uh, and just kept insinuating that she wanted to like for me to destroy her. She was like, "I want you to just ravage me and destroy me." And I'm just like, <laughs> "Bruh, I'm gonna give you one thrust, and you're gonna break in four pieces, girl." No thanks. She could have robbed you. You right. <laughs> you right. But I was hoping she would rob me and leave. Take one of my guitars and walk out the front door. Don't take me. Please, <laughs> take my guitars. <laughs> Don't take me. So, I match with a girl. Very attractive, cool girl. You know, like usual. And we, uh, and, uh, we talk back and forth. And she can carry along a conversation really well. She's weird as hell, which is great. The weird girls are always the funnest ones, let's be honest. So we match, you know, we're talking back and forth. Talking, we're finishing each other's sentences and shit. It's a great time. So we match and we're talking and stuff. And I keep asking him, I ask her if she'd like to hang out, you know, because that's obviously the next step. And she's like, no, I can't hang out. And I'm like, okay, cool. And she's like, I might be able to in a couple weeks. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. Let's do that. So, you know, I keep her on the line a couple weeks, you know, roll by. And she's like, hey, we should hang out this Friday. And I'm like, all right, cool. We'll hang out this Friday. So I tell her to come over at like 7.30. So we, you know, we're, 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 we're talking. 7.30 rolls around and she gets dropped off by like a taxi or some shit. Which is weird. But whatever. Girl's cool. It's the same girl. We talk. We have a lot of fun. But I realize right away that she's really open about everything. Okay. Real open about everything. So it worked out? Yeah. We were sitting there, you know, drinking, and she tells me right away that she's crazy, which is always a good sign, is when a girl tells you they're crazy right off the bat. She's like, oh, I'm just going to let you know that I'm bipolar. Um, You know, I have this, I have that, I have this, I have that. Um, I have to take all these medicines. I'm like, I'm crazy as hell, and, you know, I start to freak out, and I'm just like over here like, oh, okay. This is fun. Turns out the reason she was dropped off on a taxi thing is because her first stop when she was finally let out of a mental hospital was my house because she didn't have anywhere to go. It was my house. We can meet this Friday. She was coming to my house to hang out with me and she had no intentions of ever leaving my house. By the way, she gets to my house and she tells me all these things while I'm sitting here. And I'm like, why would she tell me all this? This seems like a bad idea. Now, she looked great. I got to get this out there. So I kind of clapped. Look, all right. (laughs) It had been a long time. I had, (laughs) you know, something about there, something about the. Something about the crazy ones, I don't know, man. It just seems like they can they can wrangle it until it falls off. I'm just putting that out there. Bob Dole! Oh, my God, dude. It's Bob Dole. Bob Dole, the gold boy. It's the ninth one of the night, dude. Oh, my God. Why do bananas have to put sunscreen on before they go to the beach? Because they might peel. Oh, they damn. The Thank because you so much, Bob Dole. Peel. I love you. Bob Early Dole is the, the man, laughing. dude. Thank you, Bob Dole. He's here. What's up, dude? How you doing? So, she crazy as hell. Now, I did not realize she intended on staying at my house. I'm sorry. I didn't know this was going to happen. She intended on staying at my house forever. I tried to get her to leave the next day, and she kind of wouldn't. She was like, oh, I can't go to where I'm supposed to go until, like, later on in the day. So, can I just stay here until that time? And I'm like, I guess, whatever. So, so she's like, all right, I'm just going to stay. So, I leave and go to work, and she's just at my house. I come home, and she's rearranged my damn furniture, kind of. And she's just still there. And she greets me as if she's my wife. (laughs) And I have to tell this girl straight, I'm like, you're going to have to leave. And she was so 
damn pissed at me. I had to make I, I had to basically I had to basically insinuate that I was going to call the cops if she didn't leave. And she finally eventually left and would text me back and forth. And at one point, we ended up getting food again and ended up clapping again because I'm telling you what, I don't know what it is about those girls that are crazy, but it's an experience, man. I just got to put that out there. But she didn't try to stay with me again. So it, it ended up working out, but that was one of the weirdest things I've ever dealt with is somebody showing up at my house directly after a, a mental hospital and trying to stay with me for the rest of forever. She actually said at one point that she was planning on staying until like January and it was like September or something. I can't remember. She's like, Oh, only a couple months. And I'm like, bruh, I was just, tr I was just trying to get a taste of the cake, baby. What the hell are you doing now? You ain't worth that much. God, you think that you think you think you can just let me smash a pisser or two and that pays for your rent. No, bruh. You gotta let me smash the pisser and pay four hundred dollars rent at least. 